Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I am Pankaj Rai, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use MVVM architecture while building app with Jetpack Compose. So let's get started. First, uh, go to Gradle and add the dependencies for lifecycle, view model, and because I'm going to do a network call using retrofit, so I have added retrofit dependencies also. Apart from this, in the design, I'm also going to add the logos. For that, I'm using the image loading library by Chris. Now let's come back to our activity. So what is this MVVM and how do we can add it? So MVVM is an architecture where we divide the separation of concern among view, view model, and model. So model is nothing but whatever we are going to get from the networks. When we do a network call, we form a model after that with a response. For us, retrofit automatically form a model and give us that. So we are just going to dire directly use that model. Here that model is nothing but this repo info. So from network call, we are going to get this repo info using retrofit. And we are going to show the content like URL, count, then even the name of this repository. So all sort of things we have it in this model. But with MVVM architecture, this model cannot update our views directly. And same way, from our view, we cannot read from this model. So I cannot read name, owner's ID, URL directly from the view. That's me, that means the activity or even the fragment. So how should I can get the content from this model to view or from view to this view model. So for that, we have view model as the intermediary. Our views will always interact with view model. View model interacts with this model and view model acts as intermediary for us in this way. But how do, as soon as you get the model, you update it to the views. So for that, we are using the observer concept of live data where beforehand we set an observer in the activity for us now it's with the composable and as soon as we get the data and the model gets updated we are going to show it on screen now let's see how do we are doing that so first of all let's initialize the retrofit so create the interface github service where we'll specify the network call that we want to do now here we are doing fit the repository to get the list of repositories sort by the number of stars that it is getting. So in query parameter, we can specify anything like Android, iOS, what kind of repository do we are searching for? We need to specify it here. So this two part is for the retrofit initialization. Nothing more than that. Now let's jump to our view model. But before that, repo is really a good concept here because with repo, we just segregate this piece of information that repo is doing a network call for us. And because this repo is doing network call for us, then later on, if we want to switch to some other network mechanism, then it's just a change of repo, nothing more than that. So inside this repo, I'm doing the network call. And this in turn returns the object, repo info. Now let me switch to view model. So inside this view model, I have one mutable live data. This is nothing but the query parameter that we are going to pass while doing a network call. And the repo query, this is our live data. So on this mutable live data repo query, I have a switch map, which means that as soon as the content for this query changes, trigger this live data code in builder. And this is going to emit the live data to us. So by this way, query becomes a live data. This repo query is nothing but the live data of list of items. And we are observing this inside our composable. So that was about view model. Now let's switch to our activity where we have our composables. So here I have created a view model. Now there are multiple ways to create this. 
here it's like a global view model wherever I need to access this then I'll pass it as a parameter another approach is inside the composable also you can create view model and by this way it gets tied with the life cycle of composable so here it's a global on that I'm calling this add query this add query parameter is nothing but changing the value for this mutable life data and as soon as the value gets updated this will get triggered and here it's doing inside our composable so unlike traditional Android way where we get the live data when we set an observer by giving parameter like this comma observer this is nothing but the life cycle owner where it could be either activity or fragment now for us with composable we get this shortcut where we can avoid passing these things or we could call directly something like observe a state and the reason for this is because every composable have a life cycle because it is having a life cycle so this can also act as a life cycle owner now we are getting the value from this and whatever you're seeing like this by here that's because of the Kotlin delegate properties where we can specify getters and setters with the delegate so as soon as the value for this changes I want to show the list of items initially this will be null so until this is null keep on showing the progress indicator at the center and once it is having a content then show this part and because this is observing as a state which means that every time when the value gets changed this will automatically recompose itself so this method will recompose itself recomposing means is like recreating itself so the views which you are seeing on screen that may get re-rendered with some other content say that initially you are getting the list of 10 items later on you may want to get from 10 to 20 but it was 0 to 10 now it is like 11 to 20 then as soon as you get those 11 to 20 and you want to recompose this then just change the value for this repo list and this is going to give you the updated content by recomposing that means redrawing itself once again on screen with the updated value so this circular progress indicator is that something like you get it from the library SDK itself but card list item now there's nothing as called as card list item under the hood it's using lazy column 4 so the concept used here is that you can use any composable inside any other composable so card list item is nothing but a composable which I've created and to this composable I'm passing another composable and this is a feature called as higher order function where to a function you can pass another function and we'll see about this card list item but let me talk about the inside column content first so on the top there is a list item which is again a composable and this is nothing but a row with two items one is the image and another one is the title that's nothing but the rim of the repository now the image that you might have seen initially at the start of the video is that it's having a round shape that round shape is coming all because of this clip clip circle shape just by adding this line you make it as a rounded shape image and this coil image with crossfade or you can directly use coil image so this Im image library is by Chris which is having good support with Jetpack Compose and after this the next content is the text which is nothing but the URL and finally at the bottom you might have seen about the number of stars that's again a row with two text star and the number of stars now let me talk about this card list item this is doing all our work for us the scrollable list that you are seeing so it is accepting two parameters one is the list of items and another one is composable now this is something called as higher order function where I'm going to pass function to this function so this lazy column for is useful for us to create the list 
just like recycler view now here we have lazy column 4 here need to pass the items then the modifier as like have a 4 dp padding all around the size and occupy the full width and height of the screen and because i want all the items to be in the card so here it's card the again a modifier as occupy the full width of the screen and height remains as a wrap content then padding is to 12 dp finally whatever i'm going to pass it here to this higher order add it here which means that the column which you have seen before this will be passed there so it's equivalent to writing like having this at this place at runtime this is going to pass this value here so that's it this was a short introduction about how you can use the MVVM architecture with Jetpack Compose. Now there are many more to cover in this which I'll cover in the upcoming videos and for this video it's only till this much where you have learned about how to do a network call, use live data and view model with Jetpack Compose and draw a list with Jetpack Compose. That's it in this video. If you have liked this video then hit the like button, share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you and stay tuned.